Hello people, in this video we want to look at abnormal uterine bleeding. Okay, so here the word is abnormal, right? So, what is normal? Look at this. This is normal. Let's use a different color for this. See, normal menstruation, usually the cycle will be 21 to 35 days. Okay, bleeding will be 4 to 5 days and loss of blood will be around 35 ml. So, some are saying 30 to 50 ml, some are saying 20 to 80 ml. Okay, let's not go till 80. Let's go till 50. Okay. So, are you focusing guys? So, basically normal menstruation, if you understand, everything around it becomes abnormal. Okay. So, normal cycle is how much? 28 days plus or minus 7. That will be 21 uh, days to 35 days. Bleeding will be around 4 to 5 days. Some people are saying 2 to 7, whatever. You go with this. Okay. Then total blood loss around 35 ml. So, you can say uh, 30 to 50 ml or 20 to 50 ml. Okay, so this is total blood loss, bleeding days and cycle. So this is normal. Anything other than this becomes what? Abnormal uterine bleeding. Remember. Now, if the cycle is less than 21, that means she is going to bleed more often. Right? If it's less than 21, it will become polymenorrhea. Polymenorrhea. It's also called as epimenorrhea. Okay? Then, if it is greater than 35 days, if it is greater than 35 days, see here the greater than has come here and the less than has come here, that is something you have to notice. If it is greater than 35 days, that means she is going to bleed less, isn't it? So, it is oligomenorrhea. For, okay, the cycles are very long, oligomenorrhea. Okay, so you understood two words, polymenorrhea, oligomenorrhea. Now, let us go to bleeding days. If the bleeding days, let us say 4 to 5 days, now let us say upper limit and lower limit. If she has very few bleeding days, scanty bleeding, hypomenorrhea. If it is greater than 7 days, menorrhagia. Once this hage comes hagia, all the blood, okay? Hagia. So, hypomenorrhea, menorrhagia. Actually, if it is prolonged the number of days, prolonged bleeding is actually called as menotax. Taxes they are saying, okay? You can remember, remember menotaxis also if you want. But anyways, go with the commonly used terminology, <clears throat> menorrhagia, okay? Now, total blood loss are around 35 ml. What if there is scanty blood loss? Hypomenorrhea, same word here, hypomenorrhea. And here also same thing, menorrhagia, menorrhagia. If it is greater than 7 days uh, or greater than 80 ml loss of blood, menorrhagia, menorrhagia, okay? Fine. That is also called as hypermenorrhagia, okay? Now, there is another thing here. If it is greater than 21 days or and if it is greater than 80 ml. So, it is polymenorrhea plus menorrhagia. That time, they, they are calling it as polymenorrhagia. Did it become too much? Just understand here. 21 days plus greater than 80 ml. Polymenorrhagia, polymenorrhagia. Two things are combining. Okay. Polymenorrhagia. Now, how is it going people? Too much? Some basic terminologies you understood, right? All these are abnormal uterine bleeding only. There are some other terminologies like metorrhagia. What is metorrhagia? Some in intermenstrual bleeding between the cycles she is bleeding. Meno metorrhagia. So, to that metorrhagia, you add some meno. Meno is something like it bleeds at any time. It's like you cannot even guess kind of a thing. It could be a CA cervix or a polyp, etc. Now, coming to um, this abnormal uterine bleeding, this is called as AUB, okay? What is abnormal uterine bleeding also called? AUB. So, all this is coming under abnormal, right? There is one more terminology that is coming under this called as DUV. What is DUV? This is dysfunctional uterine bleeding. This is also abnormal only. So, basically, dysfunctional uterine bleeding is something that where you exclude all the causes of abnormal uterine bleeding, then you will get DUV, dysfunctional uh, uterine bleeding, okay? So, did you understand guys? So, you have abnormal uterine bleeding. Under that, you saw so many menorrhagias, etc. There is something called as dysfunctional uterine bleeding where the normal causes which can cause an abnormal uterine bleed, those if you exclude all of them, it will become a dysfunctional uterine bleed. We will come to this. Okay? Don't worry. So, you have looked at so many terminologies. Right? Now, let us look at uh, some other terminologies. So, do you know what aminorrhoia is? Aminorrhoia. Aminorrhoia means there is no uh, menstruation, right? This can be primary, like before puberty, or there'll be, or uh, secondary. Basically, the menstruation happens and then it stops, right? It can be in terms of pregnancy, etc. So there are some terminologies like aminorrhoia. If you want, you can know that. Okay. Then some more terminologies. What is dysmenorrhea? It is painful menstruation. It can either be prior to the period. 
that is called a secondary dysmenorrhea because this will be because of some pelvic pathology it's also called as congestive dysmenorrhea then you have pain which begins you know just before or with the onset of menstruation this will be primary dysmenorrhea this is also called as spasmodic actually uh, there is no uh, proper um, uh, explanation for why this happens tension everything is written here spasm basically you can remember that is primary dysmenorrhea okay so you have primary dysmenorrhea and secondary dysmenorrhea so you have congestive and spasmodic which is more dangerous the congestive one because it is associated with pelvic pathology okay so we'll make this as a reddish color okay so secondary dysmenorrhea is congestive it is starting before the menstruation it is associated with pelvic pathology guys are you listening okay so you learned so many terms right now what are the causes of abnormal vaginal bleeding so you need to know the causes right so basically um it can be menstrual looks like or it is non menstrual let us understand like this so basically these people have some uh, platelet deficiency they have some leukemia uh, idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura is it von willebrand disease so some basically coagulopathies they are talking about or endocrine like thyroid dysfunction or uh, organic they can have something there like a tumor so there could be a uterine fibroid endometriosis that is where all the endometrial uh, glands are sitting somewhere else outside the uterus that becomes endometriosis adenomyosis is where the glands are sitting within the wall of the uterus adenomyosis because of which she is having lot of bleeding there could be polyps endometrial polyps right there could be an iucd that is a intrauterine contraceptive device which is making her bleed or there is a mass right adnexal pathology that means something around right what is po cubo ovarian mass so basically something around the uterus right so if this is the uterus and some tubes there here in the fallopian tube and the ovary some mass is sitting in those uh, places which is causing the bleeding so you understood right tumors polyps some contraceptive device or uh, endometriosis or adenomyosis or some tubo ovarian mass all these right tumors basically they're talking about some mass so these are the organic causes of bleeding and the other causes are the coagulopathies or they are mentioning something wrong with the blood and the clotting factors or thyroid dysfunction okay now let us come to this guys we are coming to the other uh, causes the other causes can be foreign body some karunkal what is karunkal actually this karunkal word we have learned in ophthalmology in the eye but otherwise here they are talking about uterine mucosa thickening okay oval or round thickening so in the uterine mucosa which is resulting from the proliferation of sub epithelial connective tissue so some thickening of the uterine mucosa then genital malignancies can be there so when you are saying genital malignancy you are talking about the cervix is it ca cervix etc post coital bleeding can be there intermenstrual bleeding that we gave it a terminology right metor what was the terminology we gave for uh, inter intermenstrual bleeding metorrhagia metorrhagia abortion can be there that's why she is bleeding or a breakthrough bleeding what is breakthrough bleeding? this breakthrough bleeding is coming under oc pills uh, adverse effects okay so basically it can happen that there will be menstrual abnormalities breakthrough bleeding okay so it is commonly due to sub threshold blood levels of hormones so it will there will be disturbance of drug absorption diarrhea vomiting everything can be there so basically you just remember because of it is oc pills okay that much you remember and this will usually settle down after two uh, three to four cycles okay to treat it also they are saying what you have to give exogenous estrogen etc so these are the normal causes of the abnormal vaginal bleeding okay now what they have done the same thing they have classified okay there is a special classification they are giving here this is a very important uh, uh, classification just just the same things they have mentioned as palm coin okay palm for polyp adenomyosis leiomyoma which could be submucosal or uh, other myoma malignancies remember so the, that became palm structural causes okay non structural causes they talking about coagulopathy o for ovar ovulatory dysfunction and uh, e for endometrial i for iatrogenic and n is not yet identified so this will become palm coin classification you'll have to know this say this p for polyp adenomyosis leiomyoma malignancy coagulopathy ovulatory dysfunction endometrial don't say anything else here i i somehow got a feeling i will say endocrinal it's endometrial 
I is iatrogenic and M is non, not yet identified. What is this ovulatory dysfunction? Where exactly did they put endo, uh, endocrinal cause here? Because we saw here the thyroid dysfunction can cause it. The same thing they have made it as ovulatory dysfunction, I feel. What do you say? So there can be oligo ovulation, an ovulation, polycystic ovarian changes, corpus luteum dysfunction. All this they are writing here actually. Interesting. Anyways. Anyways, remember this ovulatory dysfunction can be because of hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, hyperprolactinemia, obesity, hypothalamic dysfunction, stress, weight, etc. So just remember that this endocrine was getting covered here, I feel. Okay. So you will have to uh, write this uh, in the exam, guys. Uh, whenever they ask uh, abnormal uterine bleeding, palm, coin spelling is C O E I N, right? So let's break this. Polyp, adenomyosis, leomyoma, malignancy, coagulopathies, ovulatory dysfunction, endometrial, some cause, iatrogenic, not yet identified. What is that? E again? Endometrial, yeah. Okay, so you have to explain all these. Now, let us lastly come to DUB. Guys, we have uh, finished uh, AUB and uh, most causes. You looked at the palm coin classification, etc. Now, let's look at DUB. That means when you do all the research and you can find no cause for this abnormal uterine bleeding, then it will become DUB. That means what cause didn't you find? You didn't find that there were any polyps or adenomyosis or leomyoma or malignancy or coagulopathies or ovulatory dysfunction, endocrine uh, problems or endometrial causes or iatrogenic causes or not yet identified. You didn't find any actual cause. Okay. That time it is called as dysfunctional uterine bleeding. So, state of abnormal uterine bleeding without any clinically detectable organic systemic or iatrogenic cause is dysfunctional uterine bleeding. So, basically it will be, uh, mostly it will be anovulatory. Okay. It is not always anovulatory. It can be ovulatory or anovulatory. But remember, in anovulatory, the DUB chances are more. Okay. Ovulatory. So, in anovulatory, when will there be anovulation? Like in puberty or after menopause, right? Or perimenopause, there will be anovulatory cycles which will cause some irregular bleed. So, that is not because of a tumor or some endocrine cause or something, right? Mostly it is because of an anovulatory cycle and this is when in puberty or um, perimenopause. So just remember. So, mostly it will be an anovulation pre uh, cause, okay? So, look at this. And, ov and ovulatory cycles like in puberty or perimenopausal or there can be after 40 years of age, there can metropathia hemorrhagica. Okay. So, basically, uh, anovulatory uh, cycles can cause DUB. Okay. Then, ovulatory cycles also can cause uh, DUB. That is, when there is some corpus luteal reduced function or increased function. Okay. So, some corpus luteum dysfunction can cause uh, ovulatory DUB also. Okay. So, ovulatory DUB is not that common guys, but it can still happen. Mainly you remember anovulatory causes. Okay. That will be causing some bleeding which is abnormal. So, that will you will classify as DUB. Why? When you can exclude all these, exclude all these causes, then you will arrive at something called a DUB, dysfunctional uterine bleed. So, in this video, you have looked at abnormal uterine bleeding, uh, entire summary kind of a thing you have looked at. For each of this treatment, you will have to learn, isn't it? So, you have looked at all these terminologies like oligomenorrhea, polymenorrhea, hypomenorrhea, hypermenorrhea, menorrhagia, right? Then, polymenorrhagia, dysmenorrhea, you looked at the word, you looked at the causes of the abnormal vaginal bleeding, classification of the AUB, that is FIGO, FIGO classification. What is FIGO? You should know. They, they, they definitely ask all these in the exam. This is the International Federation of Gynecology and Obstetrics, guys. International Federation, F-I-G-O, International Federation of Gynecology and Obstetrics. Those, they, those people have given the classification. So, you need to know this classification. It's important, okay? The same thing without this classification, they have written here. Same thing only they have written. Uh, uh, uterine bleeding, non-menstrual, in that organic causes and hematological or endocrine causes. Same thing only. This has a special name, palm, palm coin from FIGO. Okay. That's it, guys. So, let's uh, wind up this video. Okay. Bye-bye.